Paul puts it first and 10. We're on an E3 plays, and it's a game-changing call. It should never have not been a call. They said not only was it interference, it was helmet to helmet. There were two calls. They just they couldn't believe it. Listen, it's a hard job for those guys because it's happening fast, but I don't know if there was ever a more obvious pass interference. Came to the sideline, looked at the football guys, like, thank you. Got to wait with one tonight. You know? It is what it is. All right, Shannon, was this call the biggest reason why New Orleans lost? No. There are a lot of things that Saints could have done to keep it from coming down to this play, Skip. Saints gets the ball to start the game. They drive down the field. They get into the red zone. They kick a field goal. The Rams' first possession, they turn the football over. Saints got it in their territory, and they get another field goal. So in five red zone possessions, they get two touchdowns. They could have ended this. Okay, Sean Payton, tell me what you're thinking. You get this big play to Ted Ginn Jr. You got it first and whatever it is at the, what, 15-yard line. Mm -hmm. Why are you throwing a pass? Mm. Why not run the ball, make them burn a timeout? Okay, you throw it. Are we going to talk about how Drew Brees threw it in the dirt? Now, I told you, everybody didn't want to talk about, oh, you too hard on the quarterback. Drew Brees stepped off a cliff, Skip Bayless. In his last six starts in the regular season, seven touchdowns, five interceptions, 6.7 yards per attempt. Over a full season, that's the exact same yard per attempt as Blake mm. Bortles. Drew Brees and the Saints offense has not been the same since they went to Dallas and got beat on that Monday night. Quick point. I completely concur with you. Hmm. All of the criticism you aimed at Tom Brady, it works on Drew Brees because <laughs> I think he stepped off the cliff. Well, he I, I, he's showing diminished skill, diminished arm strength, yes. diminished accuracy, diminished guts, yes. whatever that is. Drew, Drew uh, the Saints, and Drew Brees, 10 points in the final three mm -hmm. quarters. I what? agree with that. What? And, and they, what are they up? 13 to 13 nothing, nothing and 20 to 10? That's 20 to 10 with 334 left at home in the third quarter? Yeah. You got to do that. You got you to close yeah. the deal. Okay. You got to close the deal. 6-0 at home, yeah. Sean Payton. Yes. Okay. Look, Skip. I got you. This is not the first. See, and this is what I, this is not the first time that a call has been, hasn't been made that a team felt they've been wrong. This is just the latest. So everybody gets heightened. Well, they need to change the rules. They need mm -hmm. to be able to replay it. They need to be able to do this. No, 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 no. Mm -hmm. Stop letting it come down to this. Because I've been told we're not going to let one call, say, determine the outcome of the ball game. Mm -hmm. Now everybody wants to let one call, even coaches, one call determine the outcome of the ball game. Mm -hmm. Saints had plenty of opportunity to put this game away. You wanted the game in your building at home. You got it. So instead of being up 13 nothing, you really should have been up 21 nothing. Mm. And now maybe it's a different ball game. Maybe it's a different outcome. But give the give. How about, we're not gonna give the Rams any credit because Drew Brees put up all those big flashy numbers. Wade Phillips said not this game. They took Michael Thomas away. Remember last game, Skip 12 for 211. This time he had four for 36. Yep. And there's no one outside of him that can make mm -hmm. plays in the passing game. Correct. They found a way to shut down Alvin <clears throat> Kamara because I thought of Alvin Kamara was going to catch like 25 passes. Mm. The, at the rate he was going, Skip, I was like, oh, mm, he's yep. going to catch by 25. Mm. But give those guys credit. Yes, yeah, Skip, it should have been a pass interference. I saw it in real time. I said, that's a flag. Mm -hmm. And then he went helmet to helmet. That wasn't no bang, bang. <laughs> bang, bang. No, no. The guy made a mistake. But this is not, I'm sure if we go back over time, Skip, we'll find more egregious mistakes that officials have made. But officials are like players, Skip. Just like we see guys, oh, he's been pressing the whole game. Why is he not pressing now? Because you guess what? Ain't nobody going to be remembered the first, the second, the third quarter. But if I give up a late touchdown in the fourth quarter overtime, what they're going to remember? The officials going to say, hold on, wait a minute. If I throw this flag in this situation mm -hmm. and I cost the Rams the ball game, that's what everybody's going to be talking about it. Be talking about. But guess mm -hmm. what? Everybody's talking about it now because you didn't throw. Skip, I'm a firm believer. Call what your eyes see. Mm. Forget when it's, if it's the first quarter, if it's the last two minutes of the game. If you see a foul committed, throw the flag yep. and you'll mm. never be wrong. Don't say, oh, you know, we hear that in basketball. Skip, you got to swallow your whistle. He will swallow the whistle. If it's a foul, it's a foul. Just like D Ford. D Ford lined up off sides. It's a five-yard penalty regardless of the time of game that it is. Mm -hmm. Nobody could argue with that. Yep. <laughs> But I am going to argue with you about this one. 
All I know is that it did come down to a play that was not called, a foul that was not called with a minute and 48 seconds left. <clears throat> I do not disagree with any point you made because we can go back and forth about they should have, they should have, they didn't, they didn't. Mm -hmm. But they still were in position to go to the Super Bowl with a minute and 48 seconds left. And because of that, for me, and again, I'll, I'll be the first to publicly admit this. I had a small personal stake here because I picked New Orleans <laughs> and New England before the year started sure. to get to the Super Bowl. And so I think I'm going to the Super Bowl with New Orleans and New England. <laughs> and I wasn't. And for me, that became the worst blown call in NFL history. <clears throat> and then the harder this morning I thought about it. No, the tuck rule is still the worst. No, I, I'll tell you why it's not. That was the divisional round game, and it was a horrendous call, but at least it was, and I've covered that game, and I'm with you. I'm, I'm anti-Brady Patriots on that. It was not the tuck rule, but the point was the NFL strongly argued through Mike Pereira, now with Fox, <laughs> that it was the tuck rule operating there and that it was the correct call. So at least that one was debatable and it was in the divisional round. Okay. At least the Des Bryant catch, which I thought was a catch, was highly debatable. What the referees threw his hands up and called it yeah, a touchdown. He did. But you could go back and forth on, did he have it? I thought he ran three strides with it, but it, at least two. Right. And he switched the ball over to his left hand because he's left-handed and tried it. to slam it on the goal line. I thought that that was a catch. But the point was, there was still time left for Aaron Rodgers to do what Aaron Rodgers has often done. So I, I can't say that's the worst call ever. We can go back to that 99 NFC Championship game, that Burt Emanuel rule. Do you remember yes, that? Yes. Okay, we can go back and forth, but it was debatable whether it was a catch or not a catch. Correct. So the point on this one was, there's no gray area. <laughs> there's no debate here. Even Nickel Roby Coleman said, after the game, I did it, yeah. right? Yeah. I did it. Yeah, you I, never admit it, though. Right, huh? You never admit it because- Well, he look, did. Yeah, you- no. I mean, he I just, know. he just blurted. by that. <laughs> like, he's just like, I did it, I got away God's with it. God's on my side. Right? The NFL immediately <laughs> said after the game from Al Riveron in the league office, we missed it. Yeah. Okay, so it's not even debatable. It's a blown call. It's clearly cut and dried a blown call. Well, I can't remember anything worse in sports history than this one because it, it, it simply decided whether the Rams or the Saints are going to the Super Bowl, right? Yeah. And so now you could say the Rams are a counterfeit Super Bowl team. They don't really belong in the Super Bowl. I can make that case because if you throw that flag and obviously to me, it, when, when it happened in real time, I wasn't quite sure what had happened. And then on the first replay, I'm like, wait a minute. He, he gets there like a whole second early. Yes. And he's face guarding. That used to be part of pass interference. Right. And it's clearly helmet to helmet. Yes. Well, how much more of an egregious right. pass interference call can you get? And Skip, right? here's the thing. There's a side judge and a back judge right there on top of it. Yeah. What's your job? That's your job. Okay. And thank you for bringing that up. So this is what irks me about the NFL. <clears throat> Those officials are all faceless to me. I don't know their names. Right. I, I know some of the head referees. I know right. some of them right. because they have personalities right. to them. Mm -hmm. But <clears throat> in this case, I look at these guys and I say, who was responsible here? Because I think now that <clears throat> pro football is being bet upon by most of the people in the country, now that it's legal to bet on it yes. in so many places, yes. shouldn't they be held accountable yes. as referees? Right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. So I, I'm, I'm going to call their names, but I don't know who should have thrown the flag. There's a side judge, Gary Cavalletto. Is he the guy? I have no idea. The back judge, Todd Prokup. Should he have pulled his flag out? How about the field judge, Tom Hill? Should he have pulled his? I don't know, but it's possible there's seven referees in the crew. Yes. It's, it's possible five of them had a chance they could all right. pull their flag out because right. they all saw it pretty right. clearly, I yes. think. Yes. And they all, so to speak, swallowed their whistle, yep. right? Yep. So to me, you've got to make them more accountable. The NFL needs to come clean with it and, and be completely transparent after the game and say, our side judge, so-and-so, failed to, to pull his flag. Skip it happened. <clears throat> They called a foul on Chris Jones. That wasn't no unnecessary roughness. Okay. That wasn't no personal foul on Tom okay. Brady. I agree with that, but on the same play, I thought Edelman got interfered with. Well, these plays happen every other play. And the same thing happened with <laughs> Jerry Goff when he scrambled. Didn't the guy grab his face mask? He then did. Then he called a foul. Right. So right. these, they, they okay, average, but, they, but for out. me, I have to come down to the climax play because this is it. 
If you throw that flag, it's going to be first and goal at the five-ish, somewhere yeah. around the five. Probably the and yeah. Spot you can five. run clock, you can run the ball, you can eat the clock all the way down to, I don't know, it's 148 left. You could, you could get so it down run, to— So if you run it, they got two timeouts at yeah. that point, Skip. Okay. So you run it. They call timeout. You run it again. If you don't get in, call timeout. Mm -hmm. The next time you can run it. So you're going to run. So they're going to get the ball back if you don't get the ball into the end zone. Mm -hmm. they're you gonna you get can the ball eat back. a whole bunch of clock. Yeah, 55 you're, seconds. You're not going to give them a whole lot of time. No. And you could also get it in the end zone. Right. You could. Right. right. right? You sure could. And then if you eat clock and get it in the end zone, I, I just don't think the Rams are going to be able to pull that rabbit out of their hat. But, it, but Skip. This game should have never even gone to overtime. Okay, I, I got that. Because Jerry Goff, Jerry Goff has Robert Woods. They come with a zero blitz. I saw it. And the guy I stumbles. He, just, he fell down. I know. But so did Robert Woods. Yes. I don't know. Well, no, I'm talking. No, I'm not talking about that. one. I'm talking oh, about I the next you play. Man, Robert Woods is gone. Yeah, the next play, Goff threw it. He, he did. He sped up faster than what he needed he to did. be. He did. Because agree. if he does it, Robert Woods is going to walk into the end zone. Okay. So I want to congratulate the Los Angeles Rams because, to all your points, they did all those good things, going all the way back to a 13 to nothing deficit early in the second quarter. And Sean McVay and maybe John Fossil, the special teams coach, I don't know who called it, but somebody called a fake punt. They right? got him again. They remember, got him again. Remember, they ran it the first time. They, they did. came up a little short. But, Skip, I think the biggest, the most important thing was the Rams were able to weather mm -hmm. the storm early. Well, that Thir fake punt might have saved the game. It did. It's starting to feel like it, it 20 did. to nothing, right? It did, because if you don't, because if you go down 28 nothing, 21 nothing, you're, you're not I don't believe back. you're coming back from that. No, okay. 13 nothing, like, well, hold on, we got a touchdown, we right back in this thing. So I also want to congratulate the Rams because they did something that few have been able to do to the New Orleans Saints, especially in that dome. Right. Mm -hmm. They turned them into one-dimensional. Yes. Yeah. That was 41 passes to only two.